In the last video, we began talking about uh, quantum mechanics as a physical theory. In particular, we saw that quantum mechanics is made up of four mathematical postulates that form a framework for the development of physical theories. In, in that video, we also saw the first postulate, which describes uh, quantum states and quantum state spaces. In this video, we're going to talk about the second postulate, which is about quantum dynamics. So without further ado, uh, let me write down uh, what the second postulate actually uh, says. It'll be a very familiar sort of extension of our notion of uh, quantum uh, gates. And what the second postulate says is that the evolution of a closed uh, quantum uh, system, so that, that's you know, uh, very important that it's closed, and I say quantum system, but of course that means uh, any physical uh, system uh, at all. So the evolution of a closed system is described by a unitary transformation acting on its state space. So to be uh, a little bit more uh, formal uh, about it, what that means is that if we have a state psi at a time t1, uh, then the state psi at a later time t2 for that uh, quantum system uh, is related to the uh, initial state by some unitary transformation and uh, u. And the key point about u is that it is a function of t1, the initial time, and t2, the final time only. In particular, it doesn't depend in any way on uh, the initial uh, state uh, or, of course, the uh, final uh, state. So it's independent of those. We have a, a linear uh, transformation. Uh, and, uh, of course, we've uh, seen many examples of this postulate in action already. Uh, all of our uh, quantum uh, gates, the you know, not gate, the Z gate, the uh, Hadamard gate, the C not gate, uh, and all the other uh, quantum gates, are all examples of this postulate uh, in action. Now, as with the first postulate, uh, quantum mechanics doesn't tell us explicitly uh, the details. Uh, in particular, it doesn't tell us uh, what U is for any given uh, physical system. If you want to know, you know how the state of an atom at an initial time T1 is related to the state of the atom at some later time T2, quantum mechanics isn't going to tell you what the value for U is. Uh, we're going to need additional uh, rules. For example, the rules of quantum electrodynamics will specify uh, how to determine uh, these unitary transformations. And in fact, much of QED is, is taken up by doing such uh, calculations. And, and so again, we see this aspect of quantum mechanics that it's a framework for the development of physical theories. It needs additional rules to be completed. Now, usually in physics, uh, you know, there's sort of a a difference, uh, we'd, we're, what we're doing here is we're describing the state at some initial time t1 and relating it to a, the state at a later time t2. But often in physics, what we're interested in doing is working in continuous time. So not at these two discrete times, but rather in figuring out the behavior over uh, time, you know, as, as time passes. So there's an alternative form of postulate too uh, which is applicable to uh, continuous time. It's kind of the continuous analog of, of this uh, uh, postulate. Um, we're not going to be using this uh, alternate form very much, and so I'm, I'm not going to uh, present it in tremendous detail, um, but physicists often do, and it's helpful to see a little bit of the uh, notation and nomenclature associated uh, to it. Uh, don't worry if you don't necessarily follow all of this. Um, we're not going to be using it very much. It, it's more just for sort of cultural reasons. Um, okay, so uh, what what is sort of the important uh, point of this alternate form of uh, uh, postulate two? And really it can be summed up in a single equation. Uh, the Schrodinger's uh, equation, perhaps the most famous or one of the most famous uh, equations in all of physics, and what it tells you, I'll write it down. Um, so there are a few bits and pieces here which we'll, we'll go through uh, in detail. So this i is just the usual complex number i, the imaginary uh, number. h bar is a number called Planck's constant. 
and it well it's you know it's it's something that needs to be uh, 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 measured if you uh, do you discover I won't say how you measure it but roughly speaking um, it's 10 to the minus 34 uh, joule seconds so that's the unit we have units of energy the joule and we have second the unit of time and often a units energy times time uh, is called uh, a unit of action uh, as I say don't worry you know if this is not if these kinds of things are familiar to you this may help you uh, understand uh, what's going on and if they're not uh, don't worry too much about internalizing uh, all of this okay so we have the imaginary constant we have this number which is just a just a, a constant uh, it doesn't matter too much really what its value is and then it says that the time rate of change of the state vector is related to this quantity over here so h here is it's not the hadamard gate uh, it's instead what's called uh, the hamiltonian and what's important about the hamiltonian it, it's a hermitian matrix acting on uh, the state uh, of uh, the uh, uh, quantum system. So Hermitian matrix meaning that uh, the uh, adjoint uh, of H uh, returns H to us again and so it's just some uh, particular Hermitian matrix um, whose value uh, determines how the state psi changes in time through this equation, through Schrodinger's equation. So uh, you know the essence of this yeah, Planck's constant isn't really so important. The essence of this is that the time rate of change of the state psi is determined by the Hamiltonian of the system, a Hermitian matrix, and by the state psi itself through this equation. And uh, that's really the uh, essential content of the continuous time analog of postulate uh, two. Now, in practice, uh, just as you know, our quantum mechanics doesn't tell us what the unitary u is, it doesn't tell us what the Hamiltonian h is uh, either. That needs to be, be figured out. And in fact, physicists spent a huge part of the 20th century, or much of the, the 20th century, was really devoted to the task of figuring out uh, different Hamiltonians for different uh, physical uh, systems. We're not going to need to worry about any of that in this course. We're just going to work with quantum gates and assume that somewhere in the background some clever physicist has worked out uh, how uh, to get that particular quantum gate. I should say, by the way, uh, something I didn't mention before, uh, but which is very important, is that you know, if you actually uh, figure out, you know, you integrate this equation, this differential equation, um, over a given time period between time t1 and t2, you can prove that in fact we recover uh, postulate 2 as I originally described it. In other words, integrating this equation gives rise to a unitary u which is related to the Hamiltonian h. Similarly, if we look at this equation, um, yeah, we can uh, uh, argue uh, reasonably uh, plausibly, it's not really quite a strict proof, uh, but you can give an argument um, that says uh, that by taking this equation and uh, sort of differentiating it, so looking at the time rate of change, um, you know, there must be some Hamiltonian H um, uh, which is governing uh, the time rate of change. There are some um, technical considerations about smoothness and, and whatnot um, that need uh, to be input uh, there, uh, but they're all quite physically reasonable. I'm not going to go through the details, but hopefully it should be at least plausible uh, that this is really the continuous time uh, analog. And uh, that's really all we need to know about postulate two. It, it's pretty much uh, what you've already seen in the discussion of uh, quantum uh, gates. It's uh, not much as new here. All right, so in the next video, we're gonna move on to the third postulate of quantum mechanics, which is about how we describe quantum measurements.